Senator from Iowa. Thank you, Mr. President. Congress and our entire nation have no more solemn duty than ones we owe to our veterans. They've given their blood, their sweat, and their tears for our great country. They fought on battlefields only to come home and face new battles, like difficulty accessing health care, challenges in transitioning to civilian life. A lot of them face homelessness, PTSD, and of course, we hear it all the time in our various congressional offices about bureaucratic red tape at the Veterans Administration. I've long engaged in Veteran Administration oversight. The VA's fought my efforts tooth and nail. I won't tire. Our veterans deserve nothing less than making sure the VA delivers in an efficient way and particularly when we find things to be wrong there. It's because of my oversight that I've placed a hold on the nomination of Tanya Bradshaw to be Deputy Secretary at the VA. I urge my colleagues to oppose the nomination as well. And so I'm here to tell you why. Records in my possession as well as statements from VA whistleblowers show that Ms. Brasher has failed to secure our veterans' private and sensitive protected health information, personally identifiable information, and whistleblower information. Information also shows that she played a key role in the Veteran Administration's obstruction of my investigation of VA uh, corruption. My Democratic colleagues rushed Ms. Bradshaw's nomination through the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee without even investigating the allegations that I brought to the committee's attention. Let's start with one of these with the VA Integrated Enterprise Workflow Solution, otherwise known by the acronym VUES. Records show that this system exposes sensitive medical, health, and personal information of many veterans, as well as whistleblower names and information. At least 1,900 Veteran Affairs employees have access to this system, but without the need to view this sensitive information. Now, Ms. Bradshaw has direct responsibility for that system as the VA's chief of staff, her present position. Emails and screenshots from views were supplied to me by whistleblowers, and most of my colleagues know I get a lot of information from whistleblowers. These emails show that these whistleblowers notified Ms. Bradshaw's deputy last July, a whole year ago, about these issues. One of these whistleblowers told Ms. Bradshaw's office she had been harassed and that she feared for her safety. To this day, Ms. Bradshaw hasn't followed up or instructed anyone else to follow up with these whistleblowers to make sure that their concerns were addressed. Despite questions for the record asked by Ranking Member Moran and Senator Blackburn, Ms. Bradshaw has offered no explanation whatsoever for why the specific personnel information brought to our office, office's attention was not secured as it should be secured. And she, instead, she pointed to a few feeble actions 
she says, were taken to address future correspondence such as training on private data. This is unacceptable for a nominee who will be in charge of the VA's effort to modernize our veterans' sensitive electronic health records if she is confirmed. Ms. Bradshaw was in the Chief of Staff's position 16 months before whistleblowers notified her of the serious potential data breach and now for a year after. That kind of inaction and negligence is remarkable, even for the Veterans Administ Administration. These flaws provide a backdoor enabling whistleblower retaliation and potential identity fraud, and they must be fixed now, not ignored. A matter, the matter was serious enough that the Office of Special Counsel last August found, and I quote, substantial likelihood of wrongdoing, end of quote, in potential violation of federal privacy laws and ordered the secretary to complete an investigation within 60 days. The Veterans Administration still hasn't completed its investigation. So the Office of Special Counsel advised my office that the most serious allegations relating to data privacy has already been confirmed. The Veterans Administration's report to the Office of Special Counsel should be issued by August 1, just days away. We did, failed our nation's veterans and neglect our constitutional duty to offer informed advice and consent on this nomination if we allowed the nomination to go forward before we have those answers. Also, how can any member have an informed choice on this nominee if the Veterans Affairs Committee didn't even bother to interview the people with relevant information on, the, on that matter? Instead, rather than investigate, the majority actually circulated a misleading memo to the committee members that was written by the Veterans Administration. It also slandered my office by claiming my staff had these allegations but intentionally hid them from the committee until the day before Ms. Bradshaw's hearing. This is not true. My staff provided the information to the committee right away. The VA ought to quickly get with the program. And that brings me to my second point of opposition to this nominee. Documents obtained under the Freedom of Information Act show that Ms. Bradshaw played a key role in the VA's failed response to my investigation into VA corruption, which the VA has stonefall, stonewalled for over two years. We shouldn't continue to reward the Veterans Administration and a nominee for their inattention to congressional oversight. We shouldn't confirm a nominee who represents business as usual and continued inattention to Congress and our veterans. I urge my colleagues to vote against this nomination until we get the answers to the American people as they deserve those answers. I yield the floor and uh, suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin.